Breaking tonight, there are level three evacuations in Malaga, south of Wenatchee. That means leave the area immediately. Crews are on scene. Those evacuation notices are for Kingsbury and Colocum Road. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Also breaking right now, several brush fires are burning along Highway 27 in the Mica area. Roads are closed from the Palouse Highway to Vicaria Road. Dishman Mica Road is also closed from Highway 27 to Madison Road. We do have a crew headed to the scene. Have you got much sleep at all in the last day? Uh, got about four hours sleep. Mm. Also very stressful 24 hours for people on the Colville reservation as the greenhouse fire continues to burn. Good evening everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. I'm Whitney Ward. Welcome everyone. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Right now level two evacuation orders are in place for people in Nespelum. That means be ready to leave at a moment's notice. Our Tim Pham was at the fire this evening with the latest. Earlier this afternoon, the fire evacuation level was downgraded to a level two as it continues to move away from town. As you can see at this hour, how intense the fire was and how close it got to the highway. The whole face of the hillside is charred and thick smoke continues to fill the air. The planes, then the rattles, the sounds heard from Arnold St. Pierre's front yard, a container of peanuts and a couple of lawn chairs. We were just sitting here this morning and watching the helicopters go by. Arnold and his son anxiously waiting while firefighters battle the greenhouse fire. Kind of stressful for my son He's out here and it just we're trying to water the lawn and all that stuff. This morning, authorities arrived telling the family to leave. Arnold sent his grandkids to OMAC, but he says he's not going anywhere. He says level three, and you guys got to leave. And I said, no, we're just going to stay here and protect us. So far, no homes have been destroyed, but the local recycling facility burned down. This whole area was just all inflamed and smoked yesterday. While the fire is moving away from town, it's inching closer to the Timberlands, a huge economic driver in the area. People may remember the fire in 2015 that burned nearly 253,000 acres nearby. It burned a lot of our timber area. And so we just, we are very concerned about our timber. That's a, a main concern for us. The challenge for firefighters now are the old mines in the hills and large holes they have to dodge. When you're fighting fire at night and you don't know there's holes in certain areas, that could become a big danger. It's tough for Arnold to watch the chaos in a place he calls home. There's familiar sounds and new ones. It was kind of crazy. Airplanes coming over, helicopters. They had something like 11 of them. Tonight, fire crews are putting these door hangers on people's home, describing each level of evacuation, as well as on the back, what to pack in case of an emergency. Reporting in Nespelum tonight, I'm Tim Pham, Krem 2 News. And we have become all too familiar with wildfires in recent years, but remembering what the different evacuation levels mean can be tricky. So here's a quick refresher. The lowest level is level one, which means be aware there is a fire nearby. The next is level two, which was issued for that greenhouse fire. That one means be ready to leave at a moment's notice. And the most severe is level three. That means leave immediately. It's important to know these evacuation levels as we continue to see hotter, drier conditions across central and eastern Washington. And whenever we are tracking wildfires, also closely watching the weather. Let's get straight to Chief Meteorologist Tom Sherry. He's outdoor on our Outdoor Weather Center tonight. And Tom, uh, the weather this weekend, not exactly good for fires. Well, yeah, Saturday will be okay, but Sunday gets hot. And by Monday and Tuesday of next week, temperatures close to 100 degrees. That's going to be tremendously hard for firefighters. So the red flag warning is in effect until 8 o'clock tonight. Look for this to be reposted, though, I would suspect on Sunday and certainly on Monday and Tuesday. But uh, we're looking for temperatures tomorrow will be in the low 80s and we shouldn't see as much wind. Right now, we're in the low 80s up near uh, Nespelum, and you can see the winds are in the single digits. So this is why they have to stomp on this fire right now before we 
get into those windy, hot conditions from Sunday through most of next week, especially Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. Pretty darn comfortable out here. As you can see, 78 degrees is what we're enjoying under mostly sunny skies. We've got a few clouds, but again, not much at all. Look for an overnight low of 52, 83 the expected high uh, again for you on Saturday. And then for Sunday, as I mentioned before, we'll see a daytime high of 90. I'll have a look at your 10 day forecast coming up in a few minutes. Talk to you then, Tom. Thank you very much. More breaking news tonight. A man was shot and killed in North Spokane this afternoon. That's according to the Spokane Police Department. The shooting happened at around 4 p.m. near the intersection of East Nebraska and North Morton Street. Police are currently talking to one suspect and are trying to make contact with the second suspect in that area. We do have a crew headed to the scene right now. We'll bring you more updates as we get more information. You guys had a true angel and she she was she was looking out for me. She didn't even know me. God bless her. <laughs> that Post Falls woman saw our story about a 25 year old who died from COVID-19. She says that story saved her life and that's why she told our Amanda Rowley she's grateful to that young woman and her family. Lisa Rivera tested positive for COVID-19 Thursday last week. Doctors sent her home and told her to isolate because at the time she had only mild symptoms. I thought I was winning this battle. Um, it wasn't in my lungs, so I thought everything was fine. But before I could leave the office, he texted that she had fainted and she wasn't breathing. A week later, Lisa saw our story about 25-year-old Aaliyah Marsh, who died from COVID-19 after having difficulty breathing. It was that same night Lisa's symptoms worsened. She could not breathe either. I just woke up. I probably can't breathe because of that. I went to the bathroom. I almost passed out, went back to the couch, sat down, and I thought first thing about her was, I said, oh boy, I said, this is exactly what happened to her, I thought, and um, this is probably a message that I need to not mess around and get to that hospital. She drove herself to Kootenai Health Hospital, but when she got there, Lisa could hardly make it inside. I just couldn't breathe, and I was trying with every ounce of energy just to make it from that parking lot into the into the emergency room, but I felt like I was going to pass out on the way. What did they tell you about kind of where you were at health wise when you got to got in to see the doctor? They said it was good that I got there when I did. They put me on oxygen right away. Would you say it maybe saved your life? I would say she definitely saved my life. She did not die in vain. Aaliyah, her message was get to the was she should have gotten to the hospital a lot sooner. That's something that she taught me. That's her legacy. If it wasn't for her, I really don't think I'd be here. I wouldn't have gone to the hospital. I know it. Lisa is home now recovering. Doctors have her on an oxygen tank. She says her fever is gone, still a bit tired, but for the most part, feeling much better. All thanks to Aaliyah. My message to others is listen to your body. If you can't, as soon as you feel you have a, a rapid heart rate, ha heartbeat, uh, tightness in your chest, don't wait for anything else. Get to the hospital. Amanda Rowley, Creme 2 News. And we thank her for sharing her story as well. Governor Jay Inslee's Safe Start plan will go into effect next Thursday. That is July 30th, and that means that gyms will not be able to operate if more than five customers or members are there at any given time. Our Morgan Trow actually found one workout studio that is now having to adapt in order to survive. Gyms used to be full of people sweating, but now the owner of Jazzercise is sweating over finances. We're surviving, but um, how long? is still to be determined. South Hill Jazzercise owner Erica Demateus just reopened her workout studio to the public when a new social distancing order was implemented. But with new restrictions from the government, she says business is stagnant. Gyms are only allowed to have five people inside at a time. We've also had to reduce our class sizes. All of my instructors are teaching about two classes a week versus some of them were teaching five, six, seven, eight. 
but having reduced costs, I can't afford to pay them. She says one of the reasons people have been canceling is because they cannot afford to pay full price. And after losing 20% of her clients, she has found a temporary solution. Before the pandemic, the studio looked like this. And this is what the studio looks like now. Just a tripod for some live stream classes. I love doing jazzercise uh, virtually because I can do it from home. Customer Dr. Carrie Traggett misses the in-studio aspect, but sees the positive advancements Erica is making for her customers. A lot of our customers, even if they haven't built a live stream, they've been saying, keep taking our fees because when everything changes, we want you here when we get back. Morgan Trow, Krem 2 News. And the governor's new mandate also is going to affect restaurants and bars here in Washington. Indoor dining is now limited only to the people in your immediate household. That means you can only sit with people in your family circle. Alcohol sales must all also now end at 10 p.m. Bar service is only allowed in outdoor seating. For counties in phase three, table sizes are now reduced to five people and total occupancy for the restaurant is down to 50%. Mark. Spokane saw the second highest single day spike of coronavirus cases today. The Spokane Regional Health District is reporting 120 new coronavirus cases. That brings the total number of cases to 3,190. No new deaths have been reported. Currently, 36 people are hospitalized. And we have mentioned it is easy to speak about the growing numbers of coronavirus cases, but reporting on the personal impact of the virus, well, that's a different story. Our Regina on live in the newsroom tonight with the story of a Spokane family who's working hard to take care of their loved ones who are diagnosed with this deadly virus. Regina. Well, Mark, a Spokane couple in their 80s were diagnosed with coronavirus and tonight their daughter Stacy tells us their family is struggling and is asking people to please be responsible and be cautious when heading out during the coronavirus pandemic. Now, Chuck is 88 and Shirley there is 87 years old. They've been married for 63 years and Chuck was diagnosed with COVID after taking a fall and couldn't get back up on July 19th. So he went to the hospital and was was uh, found out about coronavirus there and surely contracted the virus a few days after. Stacy says she isn't sure how they exactly got COVID-19, but says her dad's friend took him to get coffee and groceries 10 days before the diagnosis. Because about um, nine days later is when my dad got the first symptoms that we didn't recognize as symptoms because who's heard of a lack of appetite as a symptom for COVID? I didn't realize that was a symptom. Now, Chuck and Shirley do have underlying health issues. We're told they are pretty weak at this point, and right now their children and grandchildren are taking care of the two. And Stacy says she is optimistic, though her parents will get better, but is hoping and urging people to do what they can to stay indoors, wear a mask if you're out, and social distance. And we definitely do want to wish Chuck and Shirley a very speedy recovery tonight. Live here in the newsroom, Regina on Krem 2 News.